All right. Uh, all aboard it comes, boy. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close those doors now. Show the jury in. Are you ready? You ready? Yes, all right. Yeah, uh, you got 20 minutes. Like everybody's back, and you may uh, begin your final close. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have a short time to talk to you, so I'm going to jump right into some of the points the opposing counsel brought up. He just came up here and attempted to mislead you. I'll start with the lock audit before we get back into the actual timeline of events, because the timeline matters. So, let's look at that lock audit. It's in evidence, you'll be able to take that. Opposing counsel showed you just the times of 7.34, 7.34 a.m. But what he doesn't talk about is all the other times, or that this says Stephen Yoon on it. You remember, I believe Detective Baker testified that the lock report was not accurate, so it couldn't be used. Well, we know, according to the timeline, which is in evidence, it's in that jump shot, we'll get to watch it. Oh, look, 6.45 a.m., he unlocked the door. He's at Walmart at 6.49. Say, you got back at 7.02, he unlocked the door. And then, remember, by 7.34, Mr. Harrington has to be all the way over at Bolivar Trails to run out. And according to his interview, he ran over there at a four minute mile. So, why is the next time 706? And then the next time the door is unlocked is also 706. Ladies and gentlemen, inspect all of this. It's not going to hide it from you, it's in evidence. Because when you really look closely at everything, because we're not afraid of the data, when you really look closely at everything, it's inherent in the story that might up. Ladies and gentlemen, he also attempted to mislead you when he talked about embeddable. He kept saying force. He said he was not forced to go over there. You will have these instructions in the back and the judge read them out to you. What is the definition of embeddable? Ladies and gentlemen, embeddable means to coax. It means to Convince. It's going to be this jury instruction that you'll have with you. The court instructs the jury that inveigle means to lure or entice through deceit or insincerity. Inveigling has no components of force, but only coaxing. Now, we heard those text messages, and we'll go through them. The Instagram, that's where we first find out what happens. Because in the Instagram message, Jay Lee writes, after leaving Tim Harrington's apartment for the first time, 4.36 a.m., he texts, I just wanted to be able to say I had you be DL. Again, fun to have been the first guy. Experiment over. Now, opposing counsel states that that's not Jay Lee threatening him. It's not our position that Jay Lee was actually threatening him. It's about how Tim Harrington perceived it. As someone who is deeply closeted, who's on the down low, who doesn't want people to know. You heard his family, none of them knew. Tim Harrington wasn't publicly out. Look through his Google search history. You'll see the kind of things he Googles. It's all finance. It's all celebrities or rich celebrities, things that he's aspirational to be, until this happens. Then all of a sudden, he 
He's either in his true pride or Googling how long it takes to strangle someone right before the person he strangles shows up. So that first message, he sends that, and then he blocks it. And then he reopens the message. He says, all right, nut it on your floor. You better clean that up. Back to block. Jay Lee did not re-engage that conversation. The only reason it happened again is because Tim Harrington contacts him over an anonymous account. Now, it's never been the state's position that Tim Harrington created the account just to contact Jay Lee. He has another account. He couldn't contact Jay Lee on the account he was blocked well because he was blocked. And we know that Jay Lee didn't know who it was because he says, who the F is this? They want to mislead you. They want you to read things that are not there. Just read the messages. They speak for themselves. We don't have to make anything up. We don't have to pretend or read anything into it. I think who the F is that speaks for itself. And then what happens? What happens after that? Right. Tim Harrington doesn't respond, hey Jay, it's Tim. Since we're in a good place, we're in a good relationship and everything, he tries to call him three times on FaceTime after him, over and over. Do you know why? Because he didn't want to put it in writing. That's why he seems to get a notice. Snapchat account. And then what happens? After Jay doesn't answer his three calls, Jay says, well, actually, I believe that's, when the, that's actually when the 14 second Snapchat call happened. And when you look at our timeline and evidence, you'll see that. That's when the actual Snapchat call took place, that was 14 seconds. That's how Jay knew who it was. So they pick up with their same conversation over again. And Jay Lee says, what did you just delete? You made it like this. And what's Tim said? Come back. He asked him to come back. Now, opposing counsel wants to say that Jay showed up unannounced. And truth be told, we don't know how Jay got to the first encounter, but we do know that Tim didn't mind because look at his interview. They want to skip over what he told the police. I mean, after he lied the first time. The second time. In that interview, he says, he came over like usual, and he gave Tim Harrington oral sex like usual. Watch that interview. You'll have all that. He could have said that he showed up on the now, I didn't know what was going on. He forced me to do these. No. But he said, like usual. That's what they usually do. So then the conversation continues. Now, remember, Jay knows who this is. What did you just delete? You made it like this. Come back. Jay Lee doesn't respond within a minute. You come in or not. And what does Jay say? He says, no. Opposing counsel wants to frame this as if this is not obvious. What's going on? Someone is asking someone to come back who is just in the fight with them. That's very clear from the Instagram messages where it was blocked. And then as we go on, we find out what the fight is about. And Tim asks, why not? Well, Jay tells him, you wouldn't even eat my ass one hour ago after I cleaned and everything. Then you proceed to nut in my mouth. Hopefully you ain't been effing nobody wrong. And then ask if I'm gonna stop harassing you now and that you want to stop linking. You know how much of an asshole move that is. That's what happens the first time. It's right there. Jay Lee is upset, not just because Tim wouldn't reciprocate, but it's all the other actions. He treated him like crap. They had a sexual encounter. Tiffany Harry was satisfied, and then he said, okay, you need to get out. And don't, you need to stop contacting me. You're not going to. Link anymore. And Jay Lee says, Do you know how much of an asshole move that is? He tells him he's foul. And then they leave. He, ladies and gentlemen, the defense would have you believe.
that is inherited or that just is being pursued by J. Lee in these messages. The messages literally speak for themselves. And then you have to ask yourself, when we're looking at this, Zabel means to lure, entice through deceit or insincerity. Only coaxing. Coaxing means to convince. Jay Lee has said no once. And Tim, he told him why too, because you treated me like crap right before this. And Tim proceeds to convince him. Jay Lee says, You've done some questionable shit, but that, treating me like that, was too much. Tells him to have a good night. Second time, Jay Lee tells him, No. Have a good night. The next thing, Jay Lee says, Yeah, now it seems like you're just trying to lure me over there to beat my ass or something. And why is that important? Because think about our earlier conversation right there in the text messages, where he told him how he just treated it. You just treated me like crap. You told me you don't want to see me again. You told me to stop contacting me. Now you're asking me to come back. Why? That's unusual. You're trying to lure me. Of course, Jamie feels like he's trying to lure him over there. He just treated him horribly. Then, Tim says, you tripping. I feel bad because we're cool. So I'm not trying to end it like this. Again, telling him he doesn't want it to be over. He doesn't want to end it like this. There's nothing more to read into that. It's right there. Jay says, how are we cool? You barely want me to text you. Opposing counsel has skipped over all these messages when he was going back through because he doesn't want you to see the real conversations. He wants to make it look like Jay Lee was inviting himself over. Jay Lee was pursuing. Jay Lee is asking Tim, how are we cool? You don't like me. You don't want me to text you. You just told me that you want to stop linking. You just told me to stop harassing me. Now, you're acting all different. That's obvious. Then, Tim says, you're a cool person. They go on to talk about when was the last time that Tim had sex, they had that conversation, and what did we see? Jay says, because he sees Tim trying to invite him over, and he wants to, he clearly likes Tim. And so he says, okay, I'll come over if when I get there, I'm going to have oral sex. You're going to give me oral sex. Tim, rather unenthusiastically, I might add, says, mm, okay. So much so that Jay doesn't even know what he's talking about. He says, just okay? And Tim later says, I'll do it. See, that's important because that's the lie and the deceit. Think about Tim's interview. Which I want you all to watch. The defense says that we don't know what the thing that's ever been done before is. Tim, Tim told us what it was. In the interview, Tim says, oral sex. He says, I've never done that before. He says, he invited him over to make it up to him because he's never done that before. That's the thing. And it's very obvious from the interviews, from the text message, and from what Jay even said. Opposing counsel put that 14 second phone call, he wants to put it where he thinks it should go to help his story. But where it actually went was right after Tim called Jay three times, he didn't answer because Jay didn't know who it was. And then 14 second Snapchat call. That's what actually happened. And the truth, the truth matters. The timeline, the timeline.
timeline matters. Then, again, Jay Lee says, you know if you try something fast, it's not good for you. And Jay says, what do you mean? And Jay says, like try to hurt me. Because you know why? He's still suspicious because Tim is acting different. He says, you barely ever want to text me earlier. He says, this is a man who just told him to get out of his apartment. He didn't want, he didn't want to leave anymore. Who just told him that he should stop harassing him. And all of a sudden, he wants to invite him over to do something to give him oral sex, which he has never wanted to do. And Tim has never done. And so, of course, Jay is suspicious. To lure or entice through deceit or insincerity. And how do we know it's insincere? Because right after Jay agrees to go, which again, he says possibly later tonight, that's not good enough for Tim. He said, I told you I'm leaving today. Jay still wasn't going to come right then. So Tim had to let him convince him to come. I told you I'm leaving later today. So Tim, so Jay then, he says, I'm coming. And once Jay agrees to come, you'll notice Tim never responds. He just needed to get Jay there. And right after that, he makes that Google search. How long does it take to strangle someone? Now, when Detective Baker testified, he was clear. He's not saying that Tim, Tim intentionally Googled how long it takes to strangle someone to get a We will never know. What we're saying is that he typed in how long to take a strangle. And when you type that in, once you get to the end of strangle, the options, like on Google, trying to predict what you're going to say, Gary Petito is the first one. So if you're moving fast, you either type that out or you click it. That's how the search is logged. That's why it's a search. Otherwise, it wouldn't be logged. They say that it's Instagram activity. Detective Baker testified about that too. We don't know if that was a notification that popped up from Instagram. It just says Instagram activity. You can't tell if he actually moved to the Instagram app. You just know it's activity. And since, just such a, since, since it is such a short seven seconds, ladies and gentlemen, you can deduce that it was probably a notification that popped up. Because that's what makes sense. Opposing counsel wants to talk about possibilities, but we are not here about possibilities. We're here about reasonable doubt. A lot of things are possible. It's possible that elephants could break in the sky. It's possible that anything could happen. To say anything could happen, Reasonable doubt does not mean all doubt. You have it's two about, minutes. Thank you. It's about what is reasonable. <clears throat> he asked two questions. How do we know Jay Lee was not alive when the car arrived at Malabar Trails? And we know that because at 728, the phone shuts off. And that, that's right before he gets to Malabar Trails. And by shuts off, we don't know if it was broken, we don't know if it was damaged. But we also know that from the testimony of Jose Reyes and Jenny's mom, that he never let anyone bother borrow his car. Jose said he don't let his car to go, let him go get some gas, to gas him. So we know that. We also know that when the car is found, all his things are in it. The things he would need to move on, to live a life. He says, two, how does the state establish that Jesse was not alive in that apartment when Tim returns from Walmart? Tim Harrington says in his interview that Jay Lee left a look for him. That Jay Lee left before him. Watch Tim's interview. He says, he left, Jay Lee, and then Tim left. And then after that, he says he went to Walmart. 
trails. In fact, they didn't really know anybody over there. They talked about talking to people over at Molly Bar Trails who said that Jay Lee was never over there. And one big point. That's not is my ring to be sure, but I was going to ring if you didn't. <laughs> You can wind up real close. I will. One big point we know for sure is that how did Tim Harrington get to Molly Bar Trails? When we asked those two questions that he asked, Jay was not alive, and Jay Lee never left the apartment, was alive when he returned to the apartment. You heard the testimony. There's one way in, one way out of Molly Bar Trails. One way in, and one way out. You never see Tim Harrington run in. Not only do you never see Tim Harrington run in, we do see a few cars go in, but if a few cars go in, if Tim Harrington was in one of those cars, why didn't he just tell that to the police when he talked to him? And if that's the case, when he got out of the car to pretend the job, why didn't he catch a ride immediately after running out of Mario Bar Trails to get into another car to take him home? <clears throat> because none of those cars dropped him off. It's not about possibilities. What is reasonable? Sometimes the obvious answer is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, July 8th has always been a special day in the Lee family. Stephanie Lee's birthday, and she testified that every year her son, Jay, calls to sing her a happy birthday. She's never going to hear that again. She's never going to call again. Why but today, you? today, it's Tim Harrington, Tim Harrington's day. It's time for him to be held accountable for what he's done. So when you go back there, look over all the evidence, take your time, dive into the data, and find the only verdict that justice demands. That's guilty. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry, uh, and it's not going to work. Uh, as I told you, when we came up there, we had some spares, so we're going to be here a while. And those uh, alternate jurors will be uh, uh, William Fargo. I don't know if you got that lucky or not lucky, Mr. Fargo. Uh, uh, Denise, uh, Denise, Denise Cole. Back out when you get get your person along. If somebody would, if that's an exhibit that's been displayed there, let's get, make sure you gather up all the exhibits before you go. Uh, Y'all, uh, all right. Uh, all right, I'm not going to say, that, well, let's wait for the door closed. Your guess is as good as mine as when this jury will reach a verdict. Uh, 
if you want to hitchhike home or something before then, if you got somebody that could uh, come this way, when the jury reaches a verdict, uh, we will uh, carry a bus back. Uh, you're welcome to stay in the courtroom. You can move around Oxford. Uh, uh, if you decide to leave and move around Oxford, uh, uh, I guess your belongings are all still at the hotel. If you want to return to the hotel, uh, you're on your own to do what you want to do. Your courtroom is open to you. Your hotel room is open to you. Uh, go and do as you see as you see fit. Uh, as I mentioned, if you want to talk about your service, uh, have that. If you don't, don't. Okay. But thank you all, and uh, I'm gonna let them come back through the through around here and come out through my chambers area here. Wait this way, okay? Give the three the three here. Make sure we've got all the instructions, all the instructions and the exhibits together, okay? Back to the hotel, have at it, but since I can see it from here, I think you'll probably be okay. <laughs> What's that? Council in their, in their uh, use any exhibits that were marked exhibits in your presentation. Okay, the state. Okay, everybody, make sure all the exhibits are marked, all the instructions are to back together. Uh, we need to talk about um, has has there been any thought given to in the event that uh, the. Oh, I'm sorry. If you, Lynn, if you would, shut the door, please. Shut the door, please. Um, has any thought been given to in the event that the jury wants to uh, uh, view any of these uh, videos? Uh, do we have some device that's not contaminated with anything else that can be used? What have you got just for the yeah, record? Is it already back there? Is it clean of any? Is it clean computer? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to let, let the clerk have the computer back there anyway. Um, if they uh, need any help starting or anything, Lynn, let us know and I'll, we'll make the arrangements, okay? All right. Go ahead and get these exhibits back and the instructions back. I will say we've got a pretty good crowd gathered here today. I know everyone here is interested in the outcome. I know it's important to everyone. In all likelihood, sometime today, we'll have a side that they feel that they've won and a side that feels they have not won. I don't know how any idea more than y'all, anyone else do. Anybody here has heard the same testimony that I have. I will say this, whether you consider your side having won or lost, I've been in this business a long time, by, you can tell by my gray hair, but on both sides, I think that the evidence was gathered, the cases were investigated, and the case was prosecuted and defended as thoroughly as any case that I've ever dealt with. So uh, whether you win your side, feel your side win or lost, I assure you that they put on their best game and their best performance. And, uh, and I appreciate you attorneys working so hard and, and getting the facts out there. And I'll say that. That being said, uh, you're free to go. You're welcome to stay, okay? Court being recessed, do we have a verdict? <laughs>